philosophers who state with confidence that miracles occur all around us every day. And that with a heightened awareness, we will be able to see these miracles and recognize the angels that walk among us. John Greenleaf Whittier was a native New Englander, born in Massachusetts in December of 1807. When the United States was divided over slavery, Whittier went to work for abolitionist William Lloyd Garrison at the Free Press. Whittier, a Quaker and a religious man, was a journalist, essayist, and poet. As a member of the Massachusetts legislature, he spent over 30 years working to abolish slavery. John Greenleaf Whittier wrote, with silence only as their benediction, God's angels come where in the shadow of great affliction, the soul sits dumb. With careful research as their greatest tool, the Miracle Research Center staff will continue to screen and present stories of the miraculous. When we go to sleep at night, our eyes and bodies may be at rest, but our minds continue to work overtime. Countless studies have been undertaken to explain what takes place at night when we are deep into a dream state. But still relatively unexplored is the connection between that dream state and the world where miracles happen. Hello and welcome to Could It Be a Miracle? I'm Michelle Wolford, segment producer. And I'm Bob Evans, producer. In this special episode of our show, we'll explore the link between the supernatural and the dream state. Do miracles happen while we're sleeping? Are miraculous dreams real or just part of our psyche? What do the history books say about such occurrences? The Bible, for example, is full of stories of people who have had divine interventions through a dream. But miracles do not live only in the pages of religious and history books. Our experts continually hear stories of real life, ordinary people who have encountered the world of the miraculous while dreaming. And in this week's program, we'd like to share a few of our favorites with you. Coming up, a young mother has a dream in which she receives needed medical advice from a deceased relative. A woman receives a dream state warning that her children are in danger and has the presence of mind to call home to see if anything's really wrong. A little girl, crushed by her grandmother's death, receives one last visit from her grandma, a dreamtime visit that changes the little girl's life. A loving son deals with his mother's failing health as best he can and finds a sense of peace after a surprise late night visit. And a mysterious apparition shakes a man out of a deep sleep to warn him of a life-threatening situation. Our first story comes from my interview with author Brad Steiger. Brad has written several books on the subject of the miraculous, many of which were written along with his wife, Sherry Hansen Steiger. He believes we can have divine interventions through our dreams. Brad told me this story of a mother who was able to save her baby from serious injury with the help of a warning, a warning that came during a dream. Sherry and I often receive stories of a mother's love that have to do with that controversial area of precognition, as we call it, or seeing the future. Is it possible to see the future? If it is, can you change it? Or is everything ordained? Is everything predestined? We have a number of interesting cases that deal with mothers who, with their love energy, seem to be able to change the future as they had seen it. 
One case that comes immediately to mind had to do with a young couple that had just moved into an apartment. They're in the process of remodeling it. And what they've just had a child, and this is a small infant we're talking I about. Dear. I can see the smile. Oh my Ow. goodness gracious. Oh my good oh, Ow. it's okay, sweet. They haven't got around to totally remodeling, but it will be their nursery. And, and there's a rather large light fixture that's in the room. They have yet to replace. They went to bed one night and the, they went into a sound sleep. Then the mother has a dream. She looks at the clock in the dream and she sees that it's a certain time. light fixture above the child had fallen, had somehow given way and fallen and severely injured their infant. She's sleeping with us here tonight. As she gains full consciousness, she sees again the clock time and she says, no, I saw a time. It's not now, but I saw a time and I know it's tonight. And unless we move the child, the baby's gonna be injured if not killed. They both manage to fall back asleep and then they're all awakened by the sound of a crash. The wife wakes up. Now the clock is exactly the time that she saw in the dream. The crash as they go to investigate is indeed the light fixture that has fallen on the crib and if the child had not been removed and placed between them would either have been severely injured or even killed. So again, what is the correct answer? Did she see the possible future? Did she receive a warning that she must act or the child would be injured and even killed? Or did she indeed see the future and her mother's love was able to change it? This case is an example of what our experts call precognition. In other words, something predicted. The woman's dream foretold the future and thank goodness she listened to that warning. At the time, she didn't know her disturbing dream was actually a warning, but it bothered her enough to act on the dream. It makes you wonder how many of us would have acted on that same warning, and how do we tell the difference between our psyche and a supernatural message? We'll explore that issue in our next story, in which a nervous new mother has a dream involving her sick infant. A dream that gives the mother a warning she could not ignore. We'll be right back. I had um, one woman write me about a dream which we classify as precognitive, that is um, something predicted, something that's going to happen. Of course, at the time you're dreaming this, you don't know that it's uh, a precursor of something that might happen. These are warnings that come to us uh, because we maybe wouldn't get them any other way. Welcome back. Some of the questions I'm sure many people are asking are, how do you know when to pay attention to your dreams? How do you know when you've just received a warning? And why does the warning appear in a dream? Of course, these are questions to which there seem to be no definitive answers. But some of our experts theorize that warnings may come to us in a dream state because our minds are more receptive. 
Without the constant barrage of information we are subjected to in our daily lives, the mind is able to process information more clearly. In our next case, author Joan Wester Anderson told me a story involving precognitive dreams or something predicted in a dream state. In the story, a new mother with a sick infant receives a diagnosis, not from a doctor, but from a dream. I'm reminded of one story of a woman who wrote me recently. She had had a rather um, awesome experience, and she didn't know at the time whether to take it seriously or not. Her grandmother had died shortly before her first baby was to be born. The grandmother had raised this young woman. That's right, Diane. Rock her very gently until she falls asleep. Like this, Grandma? Just like that. What if she wakes up? Oh, she'll probably be hungry. And so we want to give her some milk from this bottle. Chocolate milk? <laughs> No, honey. It has to be the right temperature. So we test it on the wrist, just like this. See? <laughs> You're such a mm, good girl. Are you okay? Yeah. Just remembering. It's just like a mother to you, wasn't she? A mother. A friend. She taught me so much. I just wish she could be here when the baby's born. She's here in spirit. I promise. She'll be here every day. But oh, Charles, I'm so scared. I've read a dozen books on raising children, but I don't feel like I'm ready. We're gonna do just fine. I promise. We'll see. I love you. Come on, honey. This has been a tough week. Let's get you home and get some rest. There you go. Before you know it, these afternoon naps are going to be a thing of the past. This woman felt so badly that, um, that she was not going to be able to have her grandmother there to ask questions of when something would come up with the baby's care. Hi. Hi. Sorry. She's sleeping. How long has she been sleeping? All day. I'm worried about her, Charles. Why? What's the matter? She's been losing weight, and, and it seems like she sleeps all day long. Honey, babies sleep all day. I know, but I tried to feed her today, and, and she, she couldn't keep anything down. Honey, there's nothing to worry about. We just saw the doctor. She had a complete checkup, and he says she's fine. I know, but I just... I, this terrible feeling. The terrible feeling is because you're a first time mother. And pretty soon you'll understand every coup, every gurgle, and every hiccup has a meaning. And because you're her mom, you'll know exactly what they all mean. You think so? I promise. Now, let's let her sleep. The young woman was very frustrated because she really didn't know whether it was just her inexperience, maybe she was too fussy, or maybe there really was something wrong with the baby. One night before she went to bed, she just said, Grandma, if you're there. Grandma, if you're listening, and if you can, please help me get through this. I'm so scared and so confused. I don't know what to do. Please, Grandma. Help me. Hey, you're not talking to me, are you? I was just thinking out loud. Yeah. Don't think out loud too long. Every time you do, you get yourself all worked up, and then you toss and turn all night. I know. I'm going to check on the baby one more time. I'll be right back. All righty. That night, she had a very profound and specific dream of her grandmother. It wasn't one of these 
loose, vague sorts of things. Her grandmother was there, she was in the dream, she was saying to this girl, the baby is very sick and you have to take him to another doctor. Grandma! Yes, dear, I'm here. But how? I, I mean, I thought you were gone forever. I never left you, honey. I'll always be here to help you. Oh, Grandma. Listen to me, Diane. Your baby is sick. She's got a heart defect. I had a feeling, Grandma. But the doctor said... Doctors make mistakes, honey. It's up to you to take the baby to another doctor. This way she'll get a treatment. I will, Grandma. You're such a natural mother, Diane. I'm so proud of you. I just had the strangest dream about Grandma. Charles, I was right about the baby. She's sick. And the very next day, she found a second opinion. And sure enough, that is what the baby had. Uh, and it's easily recognizable. It was a shame that the first doctor hadn't found it. But you do need surgery for it. Okay. Oh, you are such a good little girl. <laughs> I'd say she has a healthy appetite, wouldn't you? She's doing great. <laughs> Look at you. You're the most perfect, wonderful thing that your mommy and I have ever done. And we are the luckiest people in the whole world. Yeah, we are. One more bite? One more bite for Daddy? Okay. She, to this day, has not had another dream involving her grandmother. But she feels as though this was an answer to a prayer. It was something that heaven allowed to happen because she needed the information. Possibly she would have found it out eventually, but the baby might have been harmed in the meantime. So the grandmother was permitted to, to travel through time and space and give her the answer that she needed in a dream. This case is interesting because the mother received very specific information from her dream, not some abstract idea. Right. I think we've all had dreams that we've had a hard time understanding. In this case, the grandmother's message came through loud and clear. Coming up next, a dangerous ice storm separates a mother from her children, but they may be able to reach each other in a dream. When we come back. Every time a baby is born, if your baby is just born, you know it's a miracle. Every time something really unusual happens to you, you know it's a miracle. Um, but do we think about that stuff all the time? Not always. I mean, we just have, you know, supposedly other things to do. I mean, when you think about it, every person is a walking miracle. That's all we are. We have no idea who we are, where we came from, where we're going, or what we're made of, and how the whole thing stays together. How would we know? I mean, we think we're running the world, we think we're running our lives, but in all honesty, when you come right down to it, we don't know anything. Welcome back. Our next story is from Bob's interview with author Brad Steiger. Brad has conducted extensive research into the connection between dreams and the miraculous. Like many of our experts, Brad and his co-author wife, Sherry Hansen Steiger, receive hundreds of letters every year from people who've encountered the supernatural. And some of these stories have a connection to the dream state. Our next story involves yet another mother and a warning that comes in the form of a dream. When a terrible ice storm keeps a mother from driving home one night, separated from her family, the world of the miraculous is able to keep her in touch with them after all. A few years back, a woman brought a very dramatic story to Sherry and myself. Now, the recession a few years ago hit the Midwest like everywhere else, and a lot of farmers' wives had to take jobs in town. In this particular story, the woman had been working at a factory in town. The husband and the children are still on the farm. They had an agreement, because this is in the Midwest where we have a lot of strong winters, harsh winters, that if she should ever be in a situation where an ice storm, a blizzard came up, her husband did not want her risking her life driving home. So she takes 
a room at a motel in town. are too bad and I have to stay over. Yeah, me too. Could you tell Daddy for me? Tell him I'm safe, everything's fine. Okay, sweetheart? Miss you? Love you too? Okay. Bye, honey. <laughs> and uh, they would go to their respective beds. She in town, 30 miles away, and, and they out on the farm. She eventually falls asleep, wishing she were at home, of course. Uh, she has a dream. And she wakes up with a start. And <laughs> she smells smoke. When she looks in a room, there's no smoke, but she, she, it's almost as if she has the sense of it in her, in her nostrils. She looks out in the hallway, there's no smoke, and then she thinks of that dream, and she's convinced there is a fire in the farmhouse. There's a fire at home. exactly what I say. I need you to do what I say. Wake up Daddy. Wake Daddy up. Find out where the smoke is coming from and have Daddy put the fire out. Okay, Mommy. She awakened him in time because the kids had come in from doing chores. The mittens, wool mittens were wet. They put them on the a heater to dry. They forgot to take them off. The wool had burst into flame. So again, if it weren't for the mother's love reaching across those miles, if it weren't for that inner mechanism, that miracle of a mother's love that says, my family is in danger, and that seems to be throughout all of nature, that's, that's that mother contact, that awareness that my family is in danger. A mother's love reached across the miles and saved her family. We've heard our experts talk about telepathic communication where two minds communicate mentally rather than verbally. But what kind of awareness do we really have while we're sleeping? Is there a different level of conscious or unconscious awareness at work here? This mother didn't have an answer to that question. But she does believe her dream was connected to some sort of divine intervention, an encounter that saved the lives of her entire family. Coming up next, the death of a loving grandmother leaves her grandchild in despair until an angel intervenes in a dream. Stay tuned for more miracles. Welcome back to Could It Be a Miracle and our special show on Dream States. Our next story comes from a previous episode and from Michelle's interview with Eileen Freeman, author of the book Touched by Angels. Eileen has a strong academic background in the field of miracles and angels. In the course of her writing and reading on the subject for years, Eileen has found many stories revealing a connection between dreams and the miraculous. In this story, a little girl, unable to comprehend the loss of her grandmother, has her first encounter with what she believes is her guardian angel. My favorite children's angel story has to do with a girl who saw her angel when she was five, as I was when I saw mine, 
and it also happened surrounding the death of her grandmother. But instead of being afraid, this little girl simply couldn't accept that her grandmother had died. And she could not move through the process of grieving because she wouldn't believe that her grandmother had died. Nobody could convince her that her grandmother was no longer here in this world. Trina, sweetheart. We can't sing happy birthday without the birthday girl, now can we? But this is supposed to be a happy day. This is your day. Don't you want to go downstairs and open up the nice birthday presents your friends brought? They're all waiting for you. And they look pretty silly in their party hats without a birthday girl. What do you say? We can't sing yet. We have to wait for Grandma. Do you remember what we talked about last night and the night before? Grandma had to go away. She went up to heaven to be with Grandpa. She didn't say goodbye. Oh, honey. She didn't leave you. She's still here with us, in our thoughts and in our hearts. She still loves you very much. No. I want Grandma. I don't want cake. I want Grandma! You know, she didn't even touch any of her cake. I don't know what to think anymore. It's been three weeks since Mom's died, and Trina still expects her to walk through the door, no matter what I tell her. You know, honey, a lot of kids have a hard time accepting death, but... Maybe Trina needs something more. Maybe she needs some counseling. Maybe you're right. I better go up and check on her. She hasn't had a good night's sleep in weeks. Oh, you're one to talk. Let me finish up down here and I'll be right up. Okay. Jesus loves me, this I know. Cause the Bible tells me so. That's the song Grandma taught you, isn't it, sweetheart? Well, it's time to go to sleep. You say your prayers? Uh-huh. I pray for Grandma to come and see me. You try and get some sleep, okay? Just because you're another year older doesn't mean you don't need your sleep. Night, Mommy. Night, Trina. And then one night after she had gone to bed, she saw her grandmother standing at the foot of her bed. Grandma! I knew you didn't die. I knew you'd come. Honey, God sent me back so I could explain to you that I'm not a part of this world anymore. No, Grandma. Stay here with me. I can't stay, sweetheart. Grandpa needs me to be with him in a better place, but I want you to meet someone very special, someone who'll look after you all your life. Look. Wow. Meet your guardian angel, Trina. She's going to take care of you. Goodbye, Trina. I love you. And the grandmother began to fade away. The angel became brighter and reassured the little girl that the angel would be with her. Trina, honey, are you okay? Hi, Mommy. Trina, where did you get this? Grandma gave it to me. It's a goodbye present. Grandma? She had to go be with Grandpa. He was lonely. Did we have a bad dream? Isn't that your mother's crucifix? Oh, I thought we... We did. We buried it with Mom. You okay, honey? Yeah. 
want to tell us what happened? I love you. But I've always loved that story because it shows just how wonderful providence is. That even we, although we do not become angels, angels being a very separate kind of life form, can still be messengers. I would think that would have a profound effect on someone so young. She really was changed, and this is one of the earmarks of an angelic experience. After this encounter, Trina's life underwent tremendous positive transformations. Much of the fear which had been a part of her daily life was replaced with a peaceful reassurance. Our next story deals with that same kind of reassurance, this time from a departed loved one who comes back to deliver a similar message. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Could It Be a Miracle? Our next story speaks to the incredible bond between mother and child. It suggests that the bond continues even after our lives here on Earth. I first heard this story from author Brad Steiger. He told me about a loving vision from a mother to a son. This man named John's mother was dying of cancer and she was in the hospital and she had suffered a lot and he was really a faithful son. He really loved his mother and he had been by her side. He'd just sit by the bed and just be with her and hold her hand and just be there for her. Is she sleeping? In and out. Have you eaten anything? I'm not hungry. Can I get you something from the cafeteria? A, a sandwich? He's stubborn, Sarah. I tell him to eat. He ignores me. Hi, Mom. How do you feel? Peaceful. I'll feel better, though, if you'll make this stubborn son of mine go home and get some rest. I'm not tired, Mom. You have the children at home, and I don't want you to stay here another night. I'll go home with Sarah and see the kids. I suppose I could use a shower. And a meal. Good. Then we are in agreement. OK. I'll go home and take a nap. If you need me. I'll have the nurses call you. Go home, Johnny. So he went home, and he sat there very grimly before he went into the bedroom, and his wife had fixed him something to eat, and he said, I, I, I should go back to the hospital. John, why don't you go lay down for an hour or so? I've got to finish the sales presentation before I go to bed, so I'll be up if the phone rings. Yeah. Okay. One hour. I know if I'll be able to sleep anyway. So he went in and said, well, I probably won't sleep anyway. But as soon as he hit the bed, he was really exhausted. So he did fall asleep, and he barely was asleep when he called his wife's name. Sarah? And, and he, he thought that she was right there because he brushed his cheek like maybe she was kissing him or stroking his cheek. And then he said, Mom? And he saw his mother, a form of his mother in the room that he thought was so real. And then he got scared and he got up and uh, realized that wasn't his mother, couldn't be. He was in his bedroom and she was in the hospital. So he ran to call and calling his wife, ran to use the phone and call the hospital. There's a station, how may I help you? Oh, Mr. Carlson. 
I was just about to call you. Your mother passed away. I'm terribly sorry. What time? Just after midnight. She was very peaceful, Mr. Carlson. Yes, I know. Mom said goodbye. So he experienced that peace, and she came to him and said, you know, that one last goodbye, and perhaps kissed him on the cheek because he felt something there first. So something survived enough to let him know that she was all right. The connection to the dream state in that story is obvious. It's reassuring to think we might have some contact with our departed loved ones. No matter when or how we receive it. Up next, a mysterious apparition wakes a young man from a dream in order to save his life. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Michelle heard about our final story from Richard Sennett, author of The Haunted Southland. Richard is somewhat of a history buff. He's long been fascinated by the idea that spirits, angels, and miracles intervene in our lives. Sometimes they are there to haunt us. Sometimes they are there to help us, as is the case with our next story of an apparition that saves some young men from a fire. I interviewed Richard in the chapel of the Olivas Adobe Historical Museum. What about the stories that you hear of apparitions saving lives? Are those apparitions part of some sort of divine intervention? People who have these experiences describe them in different ways. Some appear very much like the angels that one would encounter at a church. Others appear as relatives. Sometimes the figures seem to appear as people you don't know. I'm told of a friend of mine who uh, was part of a group in Baltimore. They had rented one of the old row houses that had been built in the early part of the 19th century as a townhouse. It's a three-story building, a little narrow thing. And they fixed it up beautifully. Hello? What's up? What is this, romp room at nap time? Come on. Go away. Were you up all night studying again? <laughs> Oh, I wish I could blame this on calculus. Wait, did the little old lady in the maid's outfit make another guest appearance? Mark, if we were making this up, wouldn't she be a supermodel in a French maid's outfit? Listen, mm -hmm. enough talk about apparitions. Jerry's moving in tonight. I don't want him to think we're a bunch of nutcases. So we should call the seance off. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> so the welcome roommate party is it's it's tonight. tonight. Of course. But of course, as people were renting it, coming and going, they needed to pay the mortgage. And as the room became vacant, my friend was invited to join them. Jerry. Hey, Mark. What's up, bro? Much. Welcome Thank you. home. Thank you. Think you're going to like it here. Cable television, running water. I'm in bachelor heaven. <laughs> All right. Hey, listen. These guys are going to try to tell you that this place is haunted or something. Don't believe them. Haunted. Just blow it off. So, of course, uh, as soon as he moved in, he was told that they had encountered the apparition of a maid, or one of the group had, an elderly woman with a black dress and a white apron, hair up in a bun. She had a broom. She was sweeping. Ooh, spooky. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait until finals week. Then we'll all resemble the walking dead. <laughs> He woke with someone shaking his shoulder, just, just shaking him violently. And when he looked up, there was the apparition, the elderly woman. There were no women living in the building. She had her hair up, the whole 19th century maid's costume. Of 
And when he stood up in bed at this amazing sight, she backed away and vanished. Saying. I'm saying that someone or something made sure that I woke up in time. She believes that if he hadn't been woken out of that sound sleep, he probably would have burned to death in the flames that consumed the whole house. So these kinds of stories are not uncommon. Richard's story has a real ghostly feel to it, but the apparition saved their lives, real or imagined. Our experts suggest that an apparition may appear several times before actually delivering the message they came to deliver. So perhaps in this case, the apparition appeared several times so that when she woke the young man out of a deep sleep, he accepted the warning rather than writing it off as part of his dream. Whatever we choose to call these events, however we justify their existence, it is interesting to wonder how the mysterious realm of the supernatural connects to us, even in our sleep. While we continue to wonder, our research team will gather more cases from around the country to share with you. We invite you to join us again next week when we will present more stories of ordinary people who've experienced the extraordinary. Then ask yourself the question we ask every week. Could it be a miracle? For some people, seeing is believing. Others behold the miraculous and insist that they see nothing more than an optical illusion, a trick of the senses. The cases you have just witnessed, as a believer or as a doubter, were worth sharing if it allowed you to examine the possibility. Could it be a miracle?